I know you guys want an update. I really, truly haven't done an update. You've seen, what, two videos since we did the live swap? And it was kind of all related to the distributor. So you saw all that. Go watch those videos if you want to know what happened with that. Um, since then, I've been playing with the tune a lot. Uh, it's definitely not as easy as tuning a sniper. Um, man, so much has happened. Um, so we got the tune pretty settled. Uh, I've driven it. Um, not a ton, but I mean, I drove it to work, you know, so I put, I don't know, a couple hundred miles on it. Um, the thing really runs awesome. <laughs> Uh, it's got some weird quirks I got to work out of it, one of which we're working on right now. Um, and uh, I'm going to insert a clip of this uh, video that I just took on the phone here just a minute ago. Um, but uh, I'm hooking up what's called IAC Kick. Now, IAC Kick is for air conditioning. That's what Holly has it in there for. But basically what it does is, um, and you can do it with a sniper too, uh, it's an input that you hook up to... Uh, 12 volt source, usually it's your compressor clutch on your air conditioning that instantly raises the IAC some percentage that you predefine, okay? Um, now, uh, in my case, uh, one of the things that I've been battling here is dumping this thing into gear, it wants to stall. It just, for whatever the combination is, and I haven't figured it out yet, and some experienced tuners that I'm working with uh, haven't figured it out yet either. Um, it doesn't catch it in time. It doesn't raise the IAC fast enough, the idle air control motor. It doesn't let the air in fast enough, and the thing stalls. Um, done a bunch of work to try and get that to not do that, but it's still doing it anyways. Um, so I decided that, hey, I'm going to kind of repurpose the IAC kick for going into gear. Um, it works absolutely phenomenally. Um, so take a look at this clip right here. So check this out. I decided I was going to hook up IAC kick uh, to the neutral safety switch. I got it tied in there with a relay. Look at how this thing drops into gear now. Like a rock star. Out of gear. Look at that. Look at how instantaneous that is. That's the way that that should work. So that clip that you just watched, um, you can obviously see how nicely it goes in and out of gear. It doesn't jump up in RPM and have to come back down. It doesn't drop a whole bunch. It's, I, I basically picked about 20% that it adds because um, I know it takes about 20% more IAC to idle in gear. Um, so uh, that's going to be our solution. I'm going to get that permanently installed. I'll explain real quick how I'm accomplishing this. Um, using this relay, uh, I'm, I'm doing a little trick that's not so obvious. Um, so I'm using the neutral safety switch um, and a 12 volt source and the normally closed input on this relay. So um, the reason uh, that I'm using the normally closed input is, uh, so we feed this 12 volts off the ignition switch, that's how this is gonna work. Right? We need 12 volts to trigger the input that I programmed. I programmed input 1 on the, on the HP for the IAC kick. And uh, what I am doing is uh, I'm holding this relay, uh, essentially holding this relay open when it's in park and neutral. So I'm normally closed, held open, if that makes sense. So normally closed, but the relay is energized, which means the input is open. So in park and neutral, it's open. When I shift into gear it's closing or de-energizing the relay, but closing the normally closed input, which sends a signal to the ECU that tells it, oh, uh, go ahead and increase the IAC 20%, which is what I'm adding to it. Um, because the starter solenoid is a solenoid, which is nothing more than a low resistance giant resistor, really is all it is, um, so it's grounded, goes through the coil in here, and then it comes out to the starter terminal right here. The relay is 75 ohms or so. So um, what we can do is essentially source our ground 
because this is a very low current relay, right? Instead of it energizing the solenoid over there, what it's going to do is provide us a ground. This is the uh, lower resistance of the two. Um, so this relay will trigger instead. Uh, and I know that probably didn't make a lot of sense to everybody, but just trust me on this, okay? There is a, uh, I don't know if I said that right, um, there is an even lower resistance path over there, I guess, is the best way for me to explain it. So the relay is going to trigger instead of, because this is a 75 ohm resistor right here, it's not going to trigger the starter solenoid from the 12 volts on this side. Because remember, it's just two coils, right? All it is is just resistance. So um, we're sourcing our ground through there is all we're doing. It's, it's kind of a neat way to do it. And the reason that I'm doing that is because the neutral safety switch is so basic on these things. It comes from the start position on the key switch, goes in and out of the connector over here for the neutral safety switch, which is down at the transmission, and it comes over to the start terminal. So basically, if you're not in Parker neutral, it interrupts it right here. So I'm just tapping in in this area right here and sourcing my ground for this relay through the solenoid. Um, so it's that simple. So basically, in Cliff Notes version here, I'm using the neutral safety switch to trigger this relay. Um, when I trigger this relay, when I go into gear, it's providing a 12 volt input through this relay that uh, tells the ECU to give me 20% more IAC. So it does that instantaneously instead of waiting for a load, which the EFI sees the load and it sees the RPM drop and it sees the map change and it starts to raise the RPM up. Uh, with the sniper, it doesn't really seem to be a problem. It always seem to react fast enough. This just doesn't. For whatever reason, I don't know if it's the manifold that I'm using or the the throttle body. I, I haven't figured it out, and I don't intend to. And I'll tell you what, if you watch that clip that was in here about how well that IAC kick works for the for uh, going into gear, I think that I think every EFI install I do from now on, I'm just going to use it for that, unless it's got air conditioning. And even then, I could figure out a way to do it with air conditioning and stuff. Um, so... Uh, at any rate, um, you know, so that's what I'm doing there. Uh, other than that, you know, it's it's really just been uh, made some other modifications. Uh, I had the, the fittings welded on here. I didn't like the way the O-rings uh, were seated, uh, so I did that. Um, cleaned up some things. I moved the uh, manifold air temperature sensor to a better location, and it's still not great. It's here. It's not in the mainstream. One of the things I'm considering doing is drilling and tapping a hole in here and getting the air into the actual manifold. This is this is kind of recessed. It wasn't good in the runner. It was heat soaking. It's still heat soaking to a certain extent. So I have the air temperature enrichment just set at 100% all the time. So basically that sensor is not doing anything. Um, the NOx sensor is hooked up. I haven't programmed it yet. Um, you know, I've been fiddling around trying to get it to idle right uh, as far as... Um, uh, going into gear. Once it's in gear, it idles great. Uh, the other thing that we did that I did not feature in a video because I had to knock it out. I had a, I had a literally a four hour window and I did it. Um, I actually changed torque converters. So, uh, I went to an 1800 to 2000 stall torque converter, um, which, uh, helped the idle quality in gear immensely. This engine, the way that this cam, it, it, it's, it's ended up being a little bit bigger than I wanted it to be. Um, and it was lugging. It, it just, the stock converter just wasn't quite enough. So I had uh, Champ Converters, big shout out to Champ Converters. Um, Jason over there uh, built me a converter, shipped it to me. I got to send my core back. Um, so yeah, I popped the C4 out of this thing in an hour and a half and put it back in, 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 you know, two hours. Uh, it was, it was a really quick turnaround and, uh, got that knocked out. So uh, that's kind of the highlights, uh, you know, that's kind of the highlights of the big changes that I've made so far. And uh, one last thing that I didn't cover too, you might ask yourself, well, what happens when I turn the key to start and this, what was sourcing a ground now becomes hot? Because it will, because you're sending 12 volts to the solenoid. Uh, nothing. It won't do anything. This relay simply can't energize uh, because you've basically got 12 volts and 12 volts and it's an incomplete circuit. Since it's the same 12 volt source, uh, it doesn't hurt anything. Um, oh, and... Uh, the solenoid, I did check it, and it's 3.6 ohms. Um, so you can see 3.6 ohms, 75 ohms. Um, obviously, that's my uh, least path of resistance, so the current uh, passes through there to trigger this relay. This relay obviously requires a lot less current to trigger because it's 75 ohms. So Ohm's Law, magic. 
Uh, you know, gotta love science. So I'm gonna get this permanently wired in here. I, I just wanted to check it. Um, I, you know, I used some test leads and that's how I did that video clip. Uh, so now I gotta do the, the painful part now that I know that it works and, and do some elegant wiring in here. So we'll get it permanently installed. Okay, so we got it all hooked up permanently. Now, this is a little different than the sniper. You want it, you want the IAC basically zero once it's hot. Um, that's just, that's, that's kind of the way that, that's kind of the way that multi-port works. It's a little different. So anyways, what you're going to see though is when I drop it into gear here, you're going to see that thing instantly jump at least 20%, a little bit more than that. So you see it's, it's, there's no lag, nothing. Then as soon as I go to neutral, there's neutral, see how it drops. So it's instantaneous change. It moves the IAC really fast. So there's no jump in RPM. It doesn't go up and have to come down. Like it's coming out of gear. It just instantaneously, pretty nice, huh? I like that. So yeah, and that's the IAC up in the corner there if you didn't realize it, you know. That's nice. Just lastly, I did want to mention there is there is another way to accomplish this. It's probably a little bit more elegant. Um, I took the easy route and just used the AC kick. Uh, I did do some reading on the Holly forum. Um, this guy Danny, I mean, he he posts just about every freaking thing on this on the Holly site. The guy is really knowledgeable, and you know he he said it's a band aid. You know, he says that in one of his posts, and I agree, it, it kind of is, but, you know, it's tuned, it seems to work so well that I'm not going to change it, but you could, if you wanted to, um, there are, it, there's an advanced uh, ICF that you can add, or an advanced uh, file, where you can do all kinds of stuff, I've, I've played around a little bit with this, actually, actually really neat, Um but uh, basically what you can do is set up the same thing except customize it. So you can set it so you can you can set up an input that uh, triggers this table to occur and it can be vacuum and RPM and IAC offset. That's I know you can't really see it and these these images are really quite small. Maybe I can uh, here we go. So here you can see it here the way that he did it. He enabled this table, and I see position offset, RPM, and map, so basically vacuum and RPM, and it's just a small little idle window, and he's got predefined uh, IAC positions for different RPM. Um, I suppose that helps stabilize it a little bit better. I don't know. It seems to work so well with mine. I'm not going to do this, but I could if I wanted to, so... Uh, advanced enable. So in addition to, um, you know, in park and you could do rising falling edge. So that's kind of neat. I could actually eliminate the relay by doing this. So that's neat. Um, but I'm, I'm not going to, and then you could do advanced enable where the TPS is below 2%. So it only does this when you're not on the throttle. So that's, that's kind of cool. Um, and then, uh, like I said, IEC position offset. So you can kind of fine tune that. So that's a little bit more elegant way to do it. It's a little bit more purpose built. Uh, like I said, it seems to be working so well for me. I'm not going to change it. So that's going to wrap this one up. And uh, I'm trying to think of what's going to be next with this uh, before. I, I've got to make sure I'm rock solid before I go to the next thing, which is going to be getting it on a dyno. Um, and hopefully getting on a dyno and having somebody that can actually tune the thing, you know, you're never going to get it. It's, it's going to run fine and it's going to be fine. You'll use that term, but you know, getting it on a dyno and having somebody really fine tune it, that's how you're going to get your mileage. That's how you're going to get your peak horsepower. Um, I'm considering taking it out to West tech cause they're here. If I can get it on his dyno, Steve is a pretty well, known and famous guy um i'm probably gonna call them up and see about maybe taking it out there there just isn't really good options in southern california which it's hard to believe um as far as dyno tuning and you know somebody that's got a dyno and tunes holly so 
Uh, there's a couple of places. Uh, the one that I had tried going to before, I wasn't impressed at all. The guy was kind of a dick. Um, and then the, there's another place who's supposed to be really good, but he really only does late model stuff, and he's also kind of a dick. I don't know why that is, but... Uh, so anyways, uh, we, yeah, we might try out, uh, we might try out West Tech, these guys. So they're engine masters, I believe, is why the guy's famous. Um, I'm not really interested in that. I just need somebody that knows how to tune this and has a dyno. Um, I, I can fake it till I make it, but, you know, I want somebody that does this all the time. So uh, we may go that route next. So we'll wrap it up.